Welcome to All Things Financial with Jack Driscoll. Each week, Jack takes on all things you thought were hard to understand about your finances and makes it fun, easy, but most of all interesting. From insurance to the best way to save your money and squeeze the most out of the dollars you put aside for your rainy day. And now, you have a friend in the money business. Here's your host, Jack Driscoll. Welcome back again, everyone, to another edition of All Things Financial. We're continuing along in this series of how to shop for long-term care insurance and what to look for, what different type of coverage options are available, what different types of coverages are appropriate for your own tailor-made, designed portfolio of the insurance product, and also design of the plan for your own needs or those of your parents or loved ones should they need care either in a home, a nursing home itself, or in their home to stay in their home, keeping them out of a nursing home for as long as possible and getting financial assistance from an insurance policy, enabling them to do so. So let me continue on with this series. We're in about part eight of this series. It looks like it's going to end up being about a 10 part series. And well, probably more than that, what I want to get to last week, I left off with some of the increase options. When you buy long-term care insurance, you typically, I'll re remind you and refresh your memories from last week, you buy a daily limit of coverage typically. Some companies offer it monthly. And then you have an ability to put an increase or inflation rider on the coverages allowing the benefit to go up slightly every year to account for inflation that's raising the price of a nursing home or raising the cost of care to stay at home. Well, I get asked the question a lot of times, a married couple, husband and wife, do we have to buy a policy for both of us? What if one of us goes into the hospital, then to a nursing home, and we only bought a three-year benefit for the nursing home. And the person at home's healthy and has a long-term care policy. Once our limits are exhausted, I'm asked, for the one that's in a nursing home, is there any way to design a policy that you can come over and start drawing from the non institutionalized spouses policy and use that one up too instead of after three years starting to go into the spouse's assets because the insurance ran out and the other spouse at home while they have a policy is not accessible because it's not them that's in the nursing home well there are abilities when you design a policy and purchase your coverages to ask about shared care for example, and shared care is an endorsement or a structure of a way you can buy policy that says we can each share each other's care. So if one of us goes into the nursing home, uses up their three years benefit in this example, they're out of coverage. Can I use up my, the uh, spouse at home might say, benefits on them to help protect their assets? And the answer is yes in some cases, and it's called shared care. And the way shared care works is I'm going through this Broker World magazine survey on all the different types of coverages that people are buying and what are most popular and what are least popular. It's a 2014 survey. You can get it from BrokerWorldMag.com and go on there and look up the long-term care survey and it will highlight a lot of these, almost everything I'm bringing up to you in how to shop for long-term care insurance, what different types of coverages are available, and what are the most popular types of coverages based on their survey, or popular types of coverage made available by companies. So this one on the shared care, it says, and other couples features, the survey goes on to say about 40% of couples who both purchased limited benefit periods. What they mean by that is a three year or a five year, something that could you could run out of coverage. You could exhaust the limit. 
And they, all, they also say, and also one of a couple sales. And what that means is we might have a husband and a wife. One might buy long-term care insurance, but not both. So that's one of a couple buying it. What well, goes on to say here, the um, sales of couples, things like that, um, you get into this about 40% of couples who both purchase limited benefit period opt to buy shared care. So that's pretty big margin where they're paying an additional premium. And it's usually substantially additional premium to buy shared care and or they'll say survivorship. So let's talk about this. The first part of the survey 40% of the couples, I'm reading from it right now, who both purchase limited benefit period opt to buy shared care, and 51% of the people that buy insurance from companies that offer shared care. So most couples are looking at one out of every two couples buying this shared care rider. So I bring it up on the show to make sure you know to ask about it. When you're shopping, some companies don't offer it. Some companies do, so you need to know that. This article goes on to say, for the survey, some products offer or include automatically another answer to a question that I get asked a lot. If I go into a nursing home, do I still have to pay premiums? And it's a good question because when we go into a nursing home, we qualify for care we're incurring the additional expense and a lot of policies offer a waiver of premium that now you no longer have to pay premiums. What we run into is if you run into a case where you say, I have to pay for a premium and I'm, in still, I'm still in the home, the spouse at home is really the one paying the premium and may be suffering some additional expenses because they're not coming to visit you every day or do prescriptions or whatever it is. That's really burdensome. So most of the coverages, most of the companies, you'll want to ask them, do you offer waiver of premium? And it goes on in this article to say joint waiver of premium which is joint waiver for both insureds if either one goes into a nursing home. So ask for this, folks. And another one says there's survivorship features available with some companies to waive premiums for a survivor after the first death. So that's the case where you say, I might have a spouse after that spouse dies, I might have other income reductions. Maybe my pension, their pension was dependent on them living and I either have a reduction of benefit or elimination of pension if that other spouse dies. So these policies will come into play and they'll say even on survivorship in some cases, if one of the spouses dies, both premiums are now waived and paid in full. That's what that means when they're waived. It means they're paid in full now. You know, you no longer have to make any premium payments. So look for that when you're shopping for coverages with the companies. A lot of companies' premium rates are different, and somebody will say, how can they offer the same $100 a day benefit or $200 a day benefit for three years? It's exactly the same coverages, and one be so much cheaper than the other. Well, not... You know, if it seems too good to be true, sometimes it is. So what you need is someone skilled at shopping for insurance that knows how to evaluate not only those limits of coverages, but also the true coverages in the booklet of the coverage pages, what you're getting for those limits. The limits are just the maximum the policy will pay up to how much a day or how much a month. But the coverages are in, written into the legal language in the booklets. Here are the claims we will make payments for versus here are the claims we will not. Then you get to the front page that's the declarations or policy page if a claim is covered. And one company may cover much more liberally than another if a claim is 
covered. Then we'll only pay up to 100 a day or 200 a day. You see what I mean? But if one company covers for many more things than another, it's very likely their premium for the same apparently $100 a day benefit is going to be a lot higher than the other one. That does not mean necessarily they're more expensive. It also does not mean necessarily the other is less expensive. So you have to compare because it may be one is more expensive that's the lower premium because it won't pay for nearly as many situations as the other one will. You have to be very careful here. You're buying a life-saving financial protection policy here. That's what you're buying. It could save the spouse at home from losing their home and they didn't even go into a nursing home because they can no longer afford to pay the bills because they didn't have enough insurance protection to pay for the other spouse who's in a nursing home or trying to pay for care to keep them at home. All right, so that is shared care and some couples features. I wanted to share with you. The most common shared care sale, this survey goes on to say, which is combining all the different designs, has a three-year benefit period chassis, they call it. And that's why I refer to that three years so much. It is a common form of coverage in a common length of time. But the benefit period with the highest percentage of shared care sales, they say, is the four-year benefit period policy. So the survey is saying most people buy a three-year benefit, but the people who are buying shared care are typically buying four years rather than three. So that's interesting and it's something for you to look at. Now, home health care. The next endorsement, one of the most important that you can have on a policy. Some companies even offer a home health care only policy. But a home health care is the endorsement you must have on the policy to try to design it as an anti-nursing home insurance, as I've referred to in the past. Anti-nursing home insurance. Don't ever put me in a nursing home. I don't ever want in a nursing home. People just go there, et cetera, et cetera. People just go there to die. I don't want in one. Add the home health care rider, allowing for the premiums to be purchasing benefits to pay for care at home, which can lengthen your stay before you would have to go into a nursing home. That's why we sometimes refer to it as anti-nursing home insurance. With home health care riders, it's designed to try to keep you home as long as possible. All right, so home health care coverage. There are some home care only policies this survey goes on to say, but only two companies that reported on the survey even offer that anymore. So most people don't buy a home health care only policy anymore, mainly because it's not available readily. But only about 2% of total sales were home health care only policies. Nearly 90%, 98% though, of the comprehensive policies included home health care benefits at least equal to the facility or institution benefit. So almost 90% of what they call a comprehensive policy, which is nursing home and home health care, equaled the benefit of whatever you bought in home and in a nursing home were equal. The old maybe policies we might see $100 a day or $200 a day benefit coverage for in a nursing home and 50% of that daily maximum at home. We don't see that much anymore. We see whatever limit you buy daily, most people are buying it. This article says, this survey, 98% of the people say, whatever I bought for in a nursing home, my maximum daily limit and my length of time of coverage, it's the same for whether I'm in a nursing home or I'm being cared for at home. Now, most policies, 79%, almost 80%, this survey goes on to say, use a weekly or monthly reimbursement design. And I'll get into that in a minute. 
21% use a daily reimbursement home health care benefit. So you've got weekly, you've got monthly, and daily. We're talking about home health care. I touched on that last week when I got into the elimination period, the waiting period, the deductible period. Well, now we're going to get into it on the coverage, the coverage itself. If I have a daily benefit maximum and I have a daily reimbursement design, reimbursement means you must incur the expense for the cost of care and then turn it into the insurance company to be reimbursed for that cost of care. If you have a $100 a day or $200 a day daily maximum, that's on $100 a day, $700 a week. But again, based on my example last week, what if you get care only two times a week, but it's $350 each time? You'll say, I looked up my policy, I have up to $100 a day, that's $700 a week, I'm fine, $350 times, I'm only using two days, surely the company will pay the whole $700, and no, they won't. If it's a daily policy with a daily reimbursement, they'll only reimburse you up to the maximum per day for the number of days you actually receive care and can submit a bill for that care. So that's why you'll see home health care policies with a weekly design or a monthly design. It's because when you're at home, you can pick and choose days to get care. When you're in a nursing home, you can't. You're getting care every day. That's part of the monthly fee in the nursing home is a daily benefit and a daily care of service. At home, that's not the case. You call the home health care agency and you have them out two days a week. You don't call a nursing home and say, I'm only going to need care two of those days a week, but let me stay in your room the other days. So you see the difference. In home health care, it matters a lot. So we have a daily benefit, weekly benefit, or monthly benefit. I'm going to tell you folks, monthly is the best. Because if you have a monthly benefit maximum, there is no maximum otherwise. You can use pick and choose days and amounts of care. You can choose, uh, you can have $1,000 worth of care in one day and not be subject to the maximums if you have a monthly maximum, not a weekly and not a daily. But if you have a weekly or a daily, that narrows down the amount you can spend in any one either week or day and it limits you. So you're going to want to watch for that when you're shopping. A monthly benefit period policy should be more expensive because they're paying more claims than a weekly, and that should be more expensive than a daily. Again, I use the word reimbursement. So on a daily, weekly, or monthly reimbursement basis, that's reimbursing you for the days of care. There is such a thing, but it's rarely used anymore, called indemnity-based policy. If you hear of it, it's like gold. Indemnity-based means if that person can no longer do two out of the six or five activities of daily living, whatever the qualification is to qualify for benefits, then if you're at home and it's a $100 a day daily maximum, an indemnity policy starts paying you $100 a day or your family, whether you're getting care or not. That's an indemnity based as opposed to a reimbursement based policy. They're almost all gone, folks. They're almost not even available. This survey says only one company sold indemnity and it was so few policies, it didn't even amount to one tenth of 1%. The only company that sells a full cash benefit did not report the breakdown of sales this year. Last year, that carrier caused 2% of the industry sales to use a disability definition, which is known as the cash definition. It sends out cash, not a reimbursement like I mentioned before. But the impact would have been lower this year, it said, because it discontinued its policy, which had a built-in cash benefit. So they've gone by the wayside. Most all policies are reimbursement based, so be careful and buy the monthly, and then the weekly, if you can't afford the monthly, 
and then know what you're getting if you have to buy it daily for home health care. Now, the other thing is in addition to cash policies, 17.7% of the policies written included a partial cash alternative, which allows people in lieu of any other benefit that month to use a percentage of their benefits between 30 and 40%, this survey goes on to say, for whatever purpose they wish. So my message here is when you're out there shopping, know what you're shopping for. The purpose of this show is to help educate, but the purpose of this show is to also help illustrate all the complexities in this world of financial planning to result in the message of, don't try this at home, folks. These are done by highly, pro, highly skilled professionals and highly trained professionals. So like you see all the stunts on TV and they say, don't try this at home. I mean it in the professional world too. Don't try to shop for long-term care insurance on your home. It costs just as much to shop through an agent in most cases as it does to shop on your own. You're still going to pay the premium with the insurance company that's chosen. So I want you to consider the alternative of not thinking you have to do everything on your own by saving that you'd be saving money because sometimes you're fooling yourself and not saving money by doing all of this on your own. All right, folks, we're out of time. Thanks again for tuning in to another edition of All Things Financial. We'll be back again next week. You've been listening to All Things Financial with your friend with the answers to all financial matters, Jack Driscoll of Driscoll Insurance and Financial Services. Securities and investment advisory services offered through Sage Point Financial Incorporated, a registered broker dealer and registered investment advisor and member FINRA and SIPC. Driscoll Insurance and Financial Services is not affiliated with Sage Point Financial Inc. or registered as a broker, dealer, or investment advisor. You can reach Driscoll Insurance and Financial Services Incorporated at 412 833 1500, and they are located at 2738 South. South Park Road, Bethel Park, Pennsylvania, 15102.